morning everyone and it's a pleasure to be able to talk to you about my experience of the course <clears throat> and I hope it's helpful for you. The reason I applied is because I'd done a talking about our course with Outside In in 2020 and I learned so much in such a short space of time and my confidence blossomed. <clears throat> now I knew this one would be intense because when we did it it was only five weeks long um, and knowing how all consuming the previous one had been. To clarify, I do have a cognitive issue and an energy limiting illness. So that plays into things being quite overwhelming generally for me. And I don't have an academic background and I came without much grounding in research. And I was concerned about that, but in the end, it wasn't a hindrance. And that is one of the huge takeaways for me that there is always a way through and we're all unique in our approaches, especially as artists with creative minds. And the barriers can be broken down and outside in are brilliant at supporting us to do just that. It's why their courses have helped me to personally develop and believe more in myself the longer I'm with them. So I didn't know what I wanted to research beforehand, but the organic approach worked really well for me. And at first though, and this is important to know, there is so much in the archives. The history itself is enormous. And when you first do a cursory search, you may not come up with a whole lot, but once you start to delve, it'll open up and you'll be overcome with information. So I won't gloss over the reality. I did struggle at first to see through it. Also, there can be a lot missing. There are many gaps, but that is also interesting in and of itself. So one piece of advice I'd give you is to understand the larger realities. And once I took a step back and I viewed the whole thing as toe dipping into the subject, the jumping off points for my art, it all became much easier for my brain to handle and find my way through. So I chose to focus on the lack of the patient's voice as it's an area that has been an important part of my personal life journey, having a highly stigmatizing and misunderstood illness. So I could deeply relate to the stories I came across and to intimately understand how tightly their histories were controlled by the clinicians themselves. Their perspectives deformed into a clinical picture, but one that is skewed and missing the notable data of the patient's own lived experience. So what came through for me on my own personal view was a picture of the paternalistic clinician as the overriding knowledge holder. But I was utterly gripped by the asylum records and inspired on so many levels. You will have 10 weeks, so that'll give you more space to research and you'll be able to hone into your specific area of interest far more, which will make the course even more valuable to your development. I used to be a TEFL teacher, so I do have planning skills and could quickly grasp the enormity of the task before us. Therefore, I gave myself set deadlines and realistic ones around my particular health issues. So what I'd suggest is be as aware as you can of your own health limitations. Think about the kinds of things that may happen to you and plan for those within your time frame. If you think of the worst case scenario, and then that will put you in good stead. And if you don't have any health issues that crop up along the way, then you'll have a less intense time, which can only be a good thing. So for example, I know how difficult things are for me cognitively. Therefore, I had to clear everything else from my schedule to do the course. Then I had to set aside a specific amount of time for research and for writing each day and the rest of the day resting. So I do a few hours in the morning and the odd day here and there where I did a little more. I knew I'd need to have to start writing halfway through as I knew it would take me personally a few weeks to get a well-written piece together especially as it was also an end presentation. I'd also need time to practice the spoken element. So planning and pacing were incredibly important for me. But I just kept reminding myself that due to the huge amount of information, this was the jumping off point for my art pieces, the inspiration for the next steps. And I also thought of the presentation as a piece of art in itself, but you certainly don't have to do that. That's just how my brain works and we had complete autonomy over interpretation. So giving myself these boundaries and this clear timeline genuinely helped me to organize my brain and work within my limits. 
Plus, there is always support from outside in whatever issues we face, and I appreciate that every time. It can sometimes be hard to accept or ask for help, but when I have done, it was always the right thing to do. So what did I get out of it? So how interesting and expansive an archive it is, brimful with the histories of so many touching stories that could be told and brought to life, and how deeply I connected to it all, and not least how stimulating it was for ideas for art pieces. I had so many running around my head. And then I learned how to respond artistically to a mainly paper and object archive, which I think is a brilliant skill and gives a huge opening for other opportunities out there in the mainstream art world. It gave me, as ever, confidence in myself and my abilities, something both the outside in courses I've taken and I have done. So much has happened for me artistically ever since, inside and outside of the organisation. I'm seriously looking forward to settling into the making and then exhibiting. I have a few ideas running around my head that I'm energised by. The whole experience was utterly compelling and thought provoking. So to end, plan your time well, consider your own health situation and your limitations and plan for those as well. Get images that are in the public domain if possible for your presentation or research paper as it will save you time in the long run or you can make your own if you have time and the Wakefield archives will be able to grant you permissions for images you use directly from there. And there's so much scope for research. For example, I focused on the lack of the patient's voice, but we had others focus on control, restraint, art therapy for soldiers, Mary Frances Heaton, among others. It was really fascinating to hear everyone else's research too, and intriguing how all seven of us took a completely different route, which we didn't plan for, and it just shows how rich the documentation is. So I'm especially looking forward to getting over to the museum and archives, something that was out of our reach due to lockdown, but it's something with hope you will be able to do and hope it will take place in person. And even if you are pushed into a digital situation, there is plenty of information out there once you start to look. You also have all our starting blocks that we discovered and requested of the team. And even though we were very restrained by not being able to get on site, we still got access to so much history and so much inspiration. So no matter how it works out for this upcoming course, whether in person or digitally, or both hopefully, both ways will be incredibly rich and full for you. And I can highly recommend it. Plus there is of course the most amazing opportunity of exhibition, which is something I'm personally delighted by. And the other artists are truly talented, so it would be wonderful to have you with us too.